Hello friends, this video on neat current electricity is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us move on to the Kirchhoff's laws. So first let's discuss the Kirchhoff's junction law which states that at a junction sum of the currents entering is equal to the sum of the currents leaving the junction. So let us suppose that this is a junction and you have currents coming and going out from many different parts of the circuit. Let's say I1 is coming in, I2 is going out, I4. I3 is again coming in, I4 is also coming in and I5 is going out. So if you talk about this particular junction, so you can say that the currents which are entering the junction are I1, I3 and I4. However, the currents leaving the junction are I2, I5. So as per Kirchhoff's junction law, sum of the currents entering the junction is equal to the sum of the currents leaving the junction. That is I1 plus I3 plus I4 is equal to I2 plus I5. Or this can also be written as I1 plus I3 plus I4 minus I2 plus I5. This is equal to 0. So this Kirchhoff's junction law is based on conservation of electric charge which says that at, at any certain point the total amount of charge coming in and the total amount of charge going out is they balance out each other. So this is based on conservation of electric charge. Let us now move on to the Kirchhoff's loop law which states that in a closed loop algebraic sum of EMF is equal to algebraic sum of product of resistances and respective currents flowing through them. So that means that in any closed circuit the total sum of the EMFs because in that circuit you might have two or more than two cells. So the total sum of the EMFs is equal to the product of the resistances and the respective currents flowing through them. Now let us take the example of this circuit. So let us say this is one cell with EMF E1, this is another cell with EMF E2. Let's say it has internal resistance R2, this has internal resistance R1. Here we have external resistor R1, this is R2 and this is R3. Right? Now, let's try to apply Kirchhoff's loop law. So, first of all, let's see from where do we see current flowing. So, from this cell, I1 current will be flowing into the circuit. Similarly, from this E2 cells, current I2 will be flowing in the circuit. So, I1 will flow like this and then it will enter here. Similarly, I2 will flow like this and then again it will enter here. So, basically, from, through this uh, area this line I1 plus I2 current would be flowing. Now again when it reaches this point I1 moves along this line and I2 moves along this direction. So I2 basically flows like this similarly I1 flows like this. So this is the flow of current in this circuit. Now as per the Kirchhoff's loop law it, it tries to tell that the sum of delta V in a closed loop is equal to 0. Now, one problem that often arises with all of us is, you know, writing this in terms of equations. Like we have to, we do understand that it means that in this closed loop. So here if you look at this example, you have three closed loops. Let us name this A, B, C, D, E. F. So here you basically have three closed loop. One is A, B, C, D, A. So A, B, C, D, A is one closed loop. One is A, B, F, E, A. And the third one is D, C, F, E, D. So these are the three closed loops that you have in this circuit. Right? Now how do you write this equation that you know sum of EMFs is equal to the product of the resistances and their respective currents. Now just follow these steps. So step number one is assume any direction. 
so you see you we have already learned all of these so this is just a recap here for from your medical entrance perspective right so we are not getting into too much of detail so you just assume any direction so let us consider the circuit a the closed loop a b c d a so in this loop let us assume this direction so we have assumed one direction Second step is EMF will be positive if assumed direction is leaving from the positive terminal of the battery. So you see this is our assumed direction and if you see assumed direction is leaving from which terminal of the battery? It is leaving from the negative terminal of the battery because this is positive terminal. So the assumed direction is leaving from the negative terminal of the battery. So in this case EMF will be negative. So EMF will be minus E1. Okay, so here in this particular loop, you just have one cell. So you have one EMF. Okay, so this is equal to, so algebraic sum of the EMFs is equal to, now you have to do product of the resistances and their respective currents. So for that, you follow step number three. IR, that is product of current and resistance, will be positive if it is along the assumed direction. So here the first resistance is R1. So you say this is our assumed direction. So in this case, the current which is flowing through R1 is in this direction, which is opposite to our assumed direction. So therefore, this would be minus I1 R1. Right? Now, let us see what other resistances do you have in this loop A, B, C, D, A. You have another resistance R2. What is the current flowing through R2? I1 plus I2. What is the direction? This direction. What is our assumed direction? This direction, which is again opposite. So this would also be negative sign. So negative sign I1 plus I2 into R2. So this was the third resistance. And what, what other resistance do you have? You also have this internal resistance, small r1. Right? How much current is flowing through small r1? i1. Right? So this would be i1, r1. Whether it will be positive or negative. So you see, through this internal resistance, the current is flowing in this direction. Which is again opposite to the assumed direction. So this would also be negative. So for this loop, this would be our equation. Minus E1 is equal to minus I1 R1 minus I1 plus I2 R2 minus I1 small R1. Now let us try with one more loop. Let us try the bigger loop that is A, B, F, E, A. Because here you have two cells. So you actually have two EMFs. So in this case, let us again assume this direction. So you can actually assume any direction whether clockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay, so in this case E1 will again be negative, but what about E2? If you look at E2, the assumed direction is leaving from the positive terminal of the cell. So this would be plus E2. So this will be equal to, what are the resistances which are part of this loop? R1, R3, small R1 and small R2. These are the four resistances. So for capital R1, this would be minus I1 capital R1. What about small R1? Small R1 is also in the opposite direction. So this would be minus I1 small R1. Now let us look at R3. So in R3, I2 current is flowing in this direction, which is along the assumed direction. So therefore plus I2 R3. What about small R2? Here also current is I2, which is flowing in this direction that is along the assumed direction. So this would be plus I2 small r2. So this would be the equation for the bigger loop a, b, f, e, a. So in this fashion you can write down Kirchhoff's using in Kirchhoff's loop law you can write down the equation but it is very important that you remember these three steps. So now let's further move ahead and discuss about the Wheatstone bridge. So what is Wheatstone bridge? Now this is a kind of arrangement. So these are some of the arrangements and devices which help us to calculate current, voltage and resistances in circuits. So Wheatstone bridge specifically is an arrangement of four resistances which helps us to find the value of an unknown resistance. Why it is called Wheatstone bridge? Because it was named after Sir Charles Wheatstone, uh, a British physicist. Okay, now what happens in a Wheatstone bridge? 
or you can say how does a weak stone bridge help us to calculate an unknown resistance so this is the arrangement of a weak stone bridge where you have resistances you have four resistances arranged in this pattern uh, this pattern and at the center you have a galvanometer to detect the uh, passage of current now a weak stone bridge is balanced when r1 by r2 is equal to r3 by r4 so when the values of the resistances are such that r1 by r2 is equal to r3 by r4 at that point in time the bridge is balanced that means there is no current or we can say there is no deflection seen in the galvanometer that means there is no current which is flowing through this line so if you name this a and b so there is no deflection in the galvanometer means that there is no current flowing along ab right so this is called the balanced condition of the weak stone bridge and this helps us to calculate value of unknown resistance for example if three of the values of the resistances are known so by using this relation you can very easily find out the value of the unknown resistance right so this helps us to calculate unknown resistances now let us talk about the meter bridge meter bridge is an instrument that is used to measure an unknown resistance and it also helps to compare two unknown resistances so the first part is the same as the weak stone bridge where you know you can find value of a particular resistance but the second part is a uh, slightly a modified version of the weak stone bridge where you can compare two resistances so meter bridge also works on the principle of weak stone bridge so if you look at the arrangement of the meter bridge it has a straight wire along the meter scale so this is the meter scale so this one is the meter scale so meter scale means it's 1 meter long or 100 cm in length and by varying the tapping point so if you look at this tapping point you have two resistances attached here r and s now by varying the tapping point so this is the tapping point for now so if the tapping point is here that means r by s should be equal to this length divided by this length so basically this length and this length they also behave like resistances so as per the concept of uh, the weak stone bridge so how do we find the tapping point or the null point so we we keep changing the position of this point until we find a point corresponding to which there is no deflection in the galvanometer so that point is called the null point and at the null point it is seen that r by s is equal to l1 divided by 100 minus l1 because l1 and l 100 minus l1 they also behave like resistances so basically whenever as soon as you reach the null point this this entire scenario is like the weak stone bridge where the galvanometer shows no deflection that means it is in the balanced condition so the ratio of the resistances would be equal so r by s will be equal to l1 minus divided by 100 minus l1 where l1 is l what is l1 l1 denotes the location of the null point or you can say location of the null point decides the value of l1 right and why this part is 100 minus l1 because this entire meter scale is 100 cm so 100 minus l1 is this part cd right so in this fashion you see this relationship helps us to calculate value of unknown resistance because if one of the values of r or s is not known we can easily calculate it in fact we can also use this relation to compare two resistances r and s right so this way it can measure unknown resistance as well as it can compare two unknown resistances Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes, and you can take a free online test. We have content for class six to twelve on physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology, along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.